You know, if you ask uh, 10 different teachers what does inquiry mean, you're going to get 10 very different answers. Uh, everybody has sort of their own conception of it, their own realization or construct for it. But it's important to realize that in terms of the vision for inquiry in science that's part of the new uh, AP science curricula, both AP biology and AP chemistry, what's important to realize is that inquiry is not limited to the laboratory. And I would say that that's actually a very narrow definition of it. The inquiry skills have to do with reasoning and use and science practices and if you want to you know sort of put it in in the most common form it would be thinking like a scientist and it would be analyzing the evidence because that's really the heart of what scientists do so the inquiry extends beyond experiments to develop the science practice and the process skills and what's done is really you are integrating three aspects of what a scientist does. You are integrating the content knowledge. There is content knowledge that we, there is essential knowledge as it's called in the curriculum framework. There are also the reasoning skills, those science practice skills, is being able to analyze the evidence, looking at a graph and saying, what does that tell you? Uh, looking at a bunch of data and finding, identifying a pattern or a trend. Those are your reasoning and critical thinking skills that are an essential part of the new framework. And finally, inquiry. And as shown here, they all go together. Neither one of them, not a, one of them stands alone. They are truly integrated. So if you again ask people, you know, what is inquiry, you'll get a lot of different answers. Some of that has to do with what might be called, although it's, it, I don't like saying it, that there are levels of inquiry, okay? Um, confirmation or structured labs have some elements of inquiry in them. And it's not to say that you can't do any of those structured labs. If you want to look at sort of these levels, you could say there's confirmation labs. You know, you verify a known principle, you get known results. We don't have too many of those labs. The structured inquiry is you have a teacher presented question and a teacher presented procedure, but the results may not be known, or they're looking for patterns and trends and deductions and so on. Guided inquiry is the teacher is still asking the question, but the students are designing the procedure. And finally, there would be open inquiry, or what they might call research in the real world. And that's where really you, neither the question nor the procedure is defined by the instructor, but rather the students are coming up with both. Now, the College Board has stated that their goal for AP Chemistry is at the guided inquiry level. So they're primarily looking at there is a question that is presented, and the student's responsibility and job and task and, and objective is to design a procedure to answer that. And like I said, this is sometimes presented as you know levels of inquiry, but really, when you think about it, and you think about how science is done, it's really a continuum. It's not like there's something that's very different than the other. Because even when they're used, starting with the teacher-presented question, good students are always asking themselves questions as they go along. And those of you who are very good teachers know that you get a lot of those types of questions from your students over the course of the year as they think about it more and more. You know, the what-if questions, the why. And the so on. So really there's a continuum among these different levels and what that means also is that there's a place for everything as we kind of go to this overall goal within AP chemistry. So the goal as set out by the College Board is for students to become proficient in exploring concepts and applying the reasoning skills via a series of guided inquiry laboratory investigations. Now, the role of structured inquiry within the developing those skills is very important because you have to, you know, students, in order to get to a certain point of asking questions, have to review some knowledge. They have to have some basic knowledge of it. 
they don't always start at you know A and B. They they start somewhere along you know maybe not X Y Z but you know L M N O P or something. Uh, so they have some prerequisite knowledge that they need to know. And a lot of that is explored in the chemistry laboratory. I would say most of it should be explored in the chemistry laboratory because chemistry at its heart is an experimental science and that's where we get those facts and theories ultimately from. So you can also use structured inquiry or structured labs for the purposes of introducing a technique. And as experienced teachers, you know that there are some techniques, such as a titration, which they're not probably going to make up on their own, right, out of whole cloth. You know, you can put them in the lab and say, okay, guys, you know, make up a procedure that we call a titration. Well, first of all, it's inefficient, and secondly, that's not the way it's done in the real world either. Practicing, working scientists use all of those techniques that are out there to answer different questions. So there's certainly a role for that structured inquiry in the techniques and also in laboratory skill proficiency. Um, it's not very exciting if you design a procedure and you run it and you get all this data and then the results are kind of hit or miss, helter skelter all over the map. That's not satisfying to the students. So having them develop some of the skills is a prerequisite for the guided inquiry. So what are the things that you can do to promote inquiry in the laboratory and in the classroom as well? I have a couple of favorite quotes that I put in everything. I like this one because it's Sherlock Holmes. Uh, of course, fictional detective, but Sherlock is better than anyone else at the world is full of obvious things which nobody by any chance ever observes. And part of our role as the teachers in AP Chemistry, or in any science class, is to develop those observational skills. And it's not as straightforward as you think. They need opportunity for it. So I like what we call this, opportunities for inquiry. The, uh, the goal is to give them those opportunities in a natural way so that they develop those skills. So what are some of these skills that you can do to promote inquiry so that they're ready for it? Well, reviewing known facts, models, and theories, of course. Observations are key, and those can be based on laboratory prior experiments that they've done, demonstrations that really get them to think about what they're seeing, and some interactive or preliminary experiments that you might do, all of which will help form the foundation for developing these, you know, the, the higher order, if you will, the reasoning skills and the inquiry uh, practices. Making predictions and planning the investigation, and that's really what they're then charged with. But you can't start at the bottom here. You really have to start up on top with reviewing and the observations and the prior experiences and all that. What are the skills that you need to support inquiry? Well, one of the things I would say is there's more of good experiment than sample specimens, chemicals, and test tubes. You know, planning an experiment means, okay, what information do I need in order to determine this? So if you give them a question, design a hand warmer, they have to ask themselves, well, what am I going to need to measure in order to design a hand warmer? I can't plan my experiment before I know what I need to measure. So those are some very overt things that you need to do to encourage them is to think about um, the variables that once they decide what data they need to know, then they have to think about, well, what are all the variables that might contribute to that, that might affect it, and how do I plan for those different variables? Do I choose an independent and a dependent variable and then control everything else? So all of those things have to come before. Um, what we call introductory or baseline activities are very important, and this is the way that we have structured all of our new advanced inquiry lab kits, so that you could simply use all 16 new advanced inquiry lab kits, because all of them start with what we call an introductory or a baseline activity or a laboratory technique part of it, which establishes, again, some foundation, and then based on that data, which they gather and analyze, 
They then construct explanations, and then through a series of leading questions, you get them to think about designing an experiment. Uh, one of the labs that we've already done and put on our website, the ChemFax for it, is the uh, Kinetics of Crystal Violet Fading. It's a wonderful lab. I love the lab. It's pretty, for one thing. You can do it with a wide variety of dyes, and we've put all that information in our ChemFax. But how many of you think that your students, given no baseline experience, could design a good pseudo-first-order rate constant lab? Right? Let's just go for it. Hey, design a pseudo-first-order pseudo first order kinetics experiment. They're going to go, huh, who, what, where, why? You know, they're not going to get there. And so what we do is we give you a series of leading questions to get from, well, what does pseudo-first-order mean? And they can either look that up or, or you can talk about it. It's in their textbooks. We provide some of that in the background information. Okay, if that's a pseudo-first-order lab, then what does that mean in terms of the concentrations of reactants specifically for this lab? So everything is built, and we give you, we give the students these questions, these discussion questions. And I want to say one thing about the way guided inquiry is carried out in the laboratory. We did have the experience last year, as you know, of doing the AP biology. And there is an enzyme lab in there, and as an old organic chemist and biochemist, I thought, oh, let me write the enzyme lab. I love enzyme kinetics and biochemistry and all that. So I wrote that one. It's really great, and I get some calls in the fall from the AP biology teachers who are doing it for the first time. And the teacher says to me, uh, you know, is asking some questions about the lab and then says, and I'm, I'm going to do all of this this afternoon in one lab. I said, how can you do that? It's an inquiry lab. You, know, you have to get them to think about it. You have to brainstorm. They have to answer all these questions. And, and I thought the answer that she gave me was very telling. She said, well, I always did the catalase lab, which was the old uh, AP biology enzyme lab. She said, I always did the catalase lab in one laboratory session. Okay, that's a fundamental misunderstanding of how you can do inquiry. Allowing time for student brainstorming is essential. If you don't allow time for student brainstorming in developing these guided inquiry labs, I'm going to sound very harsh, then don't bother doing it because you're really not doing it, okay? You must build in the time. And so what we've tried to do, and I think if you look at uh, the chem facts for designing a hand warmer, and if you also look at the one online that we posted about a month ago, which is for um, the kinetics of crystal violet fading, you will see how the opportunity for inquiry is built in through a series of questions that promotes and supports the inquiry skills. It's all about the reasoning, and you have to allow time for that. So that's my commercial about that. So if I had kind of a, a touchstone for AP chemistry, and I believe that if you look at the College Board curriculum, this is what they are emphasizing. It's getting the evidence, looking at the evidence, and saying, what does that evidence mean? It's no longer about memorizing a whole table or slew or book of facts. It is about, here is the evidence, what does it mean? Interpret it and so on. And if you look at the sample questions that I've seen in the AP Chemistry Curriculum Framework, this is exactly what they do. They present evidence to them and say, and then ask them questions about it. 